Hi, welcome back to the bench. So today we're going to take a look at a question that was asked by a gentleman on the EV blog forum about the continuity mode uh, in uh, in your multimeter and how safe is it to use to uh, explore and try and reverse engineer circuits. Uh, and specifically, the circuit that was uh, in question was the uh, circuit board on the new EV blog uh, multimeter. And uh, my first re reaction to that was, well, of course, it should be safe. I mean, that's sort of the these were designed to be safe to be used in electronics and buzzing out, uh, you know, various circuits, unpowered, of course. But um, that's only a gut feeling. So I figured, well, maybe there's something I can do to measure that. Maybe you can try and show or prove that these are designed such that they won't put a, a lethal voltage or, uh, you know, source too much current into whatever device or circuit under test. The setup we have is. Uh, a device under test, which will use the EV block multimeter, but I'm going to grab a couple of other uh, multimeters that I have as well sitting around. We have uh, another meter measuring the voltage across the part or the circuit under test. In this case, it will be a resistor, a resistor, but we'll also take a look at a diode. And uh, we've got another meter that's connected to a microcurrent that's measuring the actual current going through the entire system. Uh, quick note that the uh, we're measuring the voltage across the part, not across the actual continuity. Uh, not across, sorry, the, not across the, uh, uh, not the current shunt from the uh, multimeter, uh, multimeter, the multi microcurrent, pardon me. What we'll try and do is we'll we'll try both the uh, continuity mode and the ohms mode, uh, especially because there might be something going on there, um, and take a look and see how both of those react. All right, so I've got this set. Uh, I'm going to set this nominally at uh, one millivolt per uh, milliamp right now and we'll see what we get. So let's go ahead and turn this on. So everything's connected up. We've got our, uh, uh, our device, device under test, our meter under test connected to our device here, which is a 56 ohm resistor. That's going into the positive uh, lead on our, our uh, micro, uh, microcurrent, the negative coming out to the negative uh, lead of our multimeter under test. <clears throat> and our meter here probing both uh, leads of the device under test of the circuit under the test circuit. So you can see right now, with uh, in ohms mode, we're measuring 55.7 ohms, which is you know, close enough for this. We're dropping 8.8 .8 millivolts across, and we're sourcing approximately 150 microamps. Let me see if I can just switch that. Yeah. Oh, okay, we're loading this out obviously because we put we just switched in a 10 a 10 ohm shunt resistor here, but. Uh, we're, we're, you know, it's about 159 microohms, uh, microohms, my, microamps, sorry. So, first thing to note, um, this is not terribly, you know, this is, this isn't going to hurt anything, uh, at least not with any kind of voltage behind it, and there's very, very little voltage being dropped over the actual part. So here we are, we're just measuring the open, uh, the open voltage across the meter and it's approximately 120 millivolts so it's nothing large um, and this is into the 10 meg uh, or approximately 10 to 11 meg uh, mega ohm uh, input on this uh, meter so you're not going to see a high uh, a very high um, voltage drop so this also wouldn't <clears throat> activate any diodes even if they're very uh, fancy uh, shot key or whatever you know extremely low voltage diodes you might have. <clears throat> so that sort of answers both of our questions right now if you think about it. We measured the current, <clears throat> not really a big deal, 150 mic 160 microamperes, and um, you know worst case, so the worst possible case is you've got a, a short and uh, sorry you guys are you have a high impedance, me uh, you're making a high impedance measurement and it's you know 120 uh, millivolts, which again is not that big a deal. So there you have it. And, um, and actually, <clears throat> I forgot to actually test the continuity. So here, let's go test the actual continuity. So I'm going to switch this to continuity mode. And I'll put this back. Well, let's leave it like this. So we'll just. There you go. So you notice that's not changing at all. We still have 8.8 .8 millivolts, and we had. About 160 microamps. So I think that's conclusive um, that at least this meter won't damage anything. But um, <clears throat> let's 
go get another meter. All right, so here we have the Fluke 27. Uh, I love this meter. It's a nice, bit like a bit like a brick. It's fantastic. Uh, same setup, uh, except this time this one's sourcing a cup, uh, 280 milliamps, uh, microamps, pardon me, uh, in the ohms mode, and uh, with a drop of about 150 millivolts. And if we look at the open, ooh, look at the open circuit voltage. That's approximately 0.8 of a volt, which is not that big a deal. Um, it might turn on a couple of diodes. So what we'll go ahead and do right now is we'll set this up and measure that. All right, so here we are, and we've got a diode now in ta under test. And as you can see, it's um, we're conducting uh, about 1.1 micro amps, and um, there's a 300 millivolt drop over here but we still have a fairly high resistance so you know I, this is probably not a fair a fair test of all of this but let's switch this to the diode measurement and you can clearly see now it's dropping the correct amount the correct forward voltage and we have 287 microvolts uh, microamps sorry in the in the case of the ohms measurement this is not uh, triggering in the case of this particular meter in the uh, continuity slash diode uh, mode <clears throat> it is it is actually dropping uh, enough voltage to uh, trigger to open or to trigger the uh, the diode here so one of these meters may not be that great for uh, not tr not uh, uh, turning on uh, or might might be and it might inadvertently turn on uh, diodes but let's try something else let's go back to the Bryman so we're going to switch it to continuity which we should be in right now and as you can see, the Bryman is not triggering, or not opening the junction. We have 522 millivolts over this, and uh, 111 microamps, which is, I guess, the leakage current for this particular uh, diode. And um, there you go. So we don't actually get a reading. And if we put it on the ohms, uh, we're getting 30 something K or whatever, which makes sense. It's not, we're not measuring what we think we're measuring. And if we switch this to the diode measurement, measuring exactly what we would expect. So clearly the continuity uh, range on this meter would be better for uh, not triggering in, or inadvertently triggering diodes or open or turning on the diodes if you're trying to measure what's going on. So I was actually a little curious um, what the other two meters would do in the continuity setting with a diode. So in this case uh, we can see, uh, I don't have the uh, current measurement hooked up, but clearly we've uh, it's applying the uh, turn on at least the, the, the turn on voltage across this uh, diode so even though the continuity is not uh, triggering um, on the Tektronix DMM916 uh, it is opening this junction so there's an interesting problem here is that um, that it might falsely trigger or cause some other behavior if this was connected to other circuitry uh, and maybe wouldn't necessarily show you what's going on the other problem is that now that since there's a voltage applied here or across here, there's now 0.5 volts on this on this junction or this uh, connection here. If there were other bits and pieces that were connected, they would also be seeing 0.5 volts as well. Probably not a big deal, but just something to be you know wary of. And again, if we switch this to diode, you can see it's the same thing. So they're cl it's clearly using the diode um, circuitry to measure the uh, continuity, at least on this meter. And again, the same thing with the Agilent. Uh, we have it on the continuity. And um, you can see that it's dropping close to 0.6 of a volt across here. So it's actually a bit higher than the, um, than the forward voltage of this diode, at least that we saw was such that we measured before. And um, you can see that the ohms measurement is clearly a bit different. We're dropping a much lower uh, voltage across this uh, across this diode, so there's clearly a different circuitry at play right here. And if we switch to the diode measurement, it's doing the same thing. It's measuring, uh, it's it's using the diode measurement circuitry to measure uh, for continuity rather than the ohms measurement circuitry, which is interesting. It's very different from the uh, from the Brian mode, which is using the uh, ohms measurement versus the uh, diode measurement. Well, actually, hang on a second. Let's. Uh <clears throat> Let's just verify that, shall we? Go ahead and plug this back in. Switch this to voltage. Switch this to diode. So it's applying uh, 
562 millivolts. And if you switch back to continuity, uh, it's a bit lower. So it's not quite, uh, it, it, if the forward voltage of this is about 564, the actual, uh, millivolts, pardon me, the, um, the continuity check is applying slightly less than that. So I'm not sure if it's a smarter continuity check that's uh, not, you know, actively not turning on the PN junction here of this diode, or if it's something else that's going on, not sure. But either way, the, the Bryman seems to be ever so marginally better in terms of uh, uh, dealing with uh, diodes better in the continuity mode. There you go, that's uh, how the continuity mode on uh, a few multimeters that I have here on the bench work. I uh, hope you learned something and uh, get out there and build something and I'll catch you later. Cheers.